One and of the, the arguments that, that it seems like Matt has made, and I think it's the right argument to make, which is they need to build this quickly because what they really need to do is think about selling. Um, and they need to, they, there's a difference in terms of the math of playing for the long term versus playing to sell. The question is how quickly you think that actually happens and to whom. It also seems that Matt has made the argument that actually the best seller long term might actually be the new discovery Warner Media, but you have to wait for that transaction to close and probably for that to integrate first. Yeah, it's going to be a longer timetable no matter what. And we're just reading the tea leaves here based on the business intelligence we have, which is that the multiple for Paramount Plus and annual recurring revenue from subscriptions is going to be higher than the multiple from a legacy media entity. There's absolutely no doubt about it. This is where it's going in the sector. We all see this very clearly. It also appears pretty clear that the combined entity Viacom CBS is going to be right in between. It's too small to compete with the Netflixes of the world, and it's probably you know bigger than, than some of the uh, entities that can remain independent for much longer. There's probably a 10 month to 12 month window on this AT&T Discovery, uh, you know, deal. It, there's also an issue with any potential Comcast arrangement. I know that was in the news a couple weeks ago. I believe there was a New York Post report. But obviously, that would go through a lot of regulatory hurdles since both NBC and CBS would be involved in the deal. But it seems clear that th this is at least being positioned for the opportunity for a sale, Andrew. John, as someone who is now getting in the, into the newsletter or subscription business yourself and the multiples that are, people are putting on subscription businesses, I wonder whether you think unto itself that will be a fad, meaning if we're having a conversation 10 years from now, whether it will be a re-rating. Right now, everybody loves a SaaS business in, in all forms. Uh, but as you know, these things seem to come and go. You know, I, I'll, I'll take you back a second. What, what's, uh, what's old is new again somehow. I began my career in the heyday of the magazine business at Vanity Fair when it was an extraordinary annual business based on monthly recurring revenue. Right? There was obviously an adjacent advertising business that everyone talked about but you knew every single month who your subscribers were. And it was an incredible, predictable, wonderful, and growing business. Obviously, there were 10 or 15 years where the internet came along and scrapped a lot of businesses. And now I think that we're seeing again how you can, can grow these predictable ARR businesses so that you can actually build adjacent lines of business around them. So I don't think it's a fat Android. I think we're actually at the beginning of something really, really big and powerful here. And look, I, I say this as, as a founder of a new media venture. We see that we are trying to build a microcosm of what these big, big, heavy behemoths are going through at the absolute other end of the spectrum. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.